Jordan Peterson. He's made his return back to sort of public life. He's not back in the mainstream media yet, but he just announced his latest book with Penguin Random House. Uh, you know, a sort of long story short for the people that don't know, um, you know, some of the employees sort of decided that, you know, a company that publishes Mein Kampf by Adolf Hitler amongst, you know, other books, they sort of decided that they they didn't want Penguin publishing Peterson's work. <laughs> so I would love to know, you know, what what is your sort of thoughts? What's your sort of reaction <laughs> to that incident? Yeah, I, I saw that Jordan tweeted out, please leave the employees of Penguin Random House alone. Uh, <laughs> so to his credit, he's defending the people that uh, that hate him. OK, that takes that takes a lot of intellectual courage to be able to do that mm -hmm. and and a spine, some fortitude. You know, he's quite open to being criticized. I've criticized him. I have a chapter in Giving the Devil His Due. Uh, the, the sec I think it's the last chapter, second to the last chapter anyway, that um, you know, I, I agree with him on some points. I disagree with him on others. That's normal. You know, that's how it's supposed to be. And, you know, the principle of charity, that is, take a charitable position towards somebody that they're not evil. They're not Hitler. <laughs> and in any case, back to the rules of conversation, you know, that, you know, no, no, not only no ad hominem, no ad Hitlerum. You know, the moment <laughs> you tell somebody that they're Hitler, the conversation's over. You know, no one thinks they're a Nazi <laughs> or they're Hitler, right? So in any case, you know, almost no one is. So, uh, you know, and Jordan's certainly not. He's, you know, he's a good guy. And he, he started off by asking me about Deepak. You know, I think he believes what he says. I, I agree. Uh, I would apply that to Jordan. You know, I think he believes what he says. I think he genuinely wants to help people. He is a clinical psychologist. Um, he thinks he has some ideas that will help people. And if you talk to the people at his um, public events, which I have, I've gone to a couple of them, you know, they seem to really genuinely get a lot out of his um, speeches and his books. And I read both of his books. I, uh, you know, the first one, uh, uh, Maps of Meaning, I found pretty impenetrable <laughs> for me anyway. And uh, I did it on audio and, you know, I gave up after about 15 hours. I, I just, I just couldn't do it. Uh, 12 Rules for Life, I thought was much better shorter maybe too long by half but still you know really good points in there basic stuff i mean most of his recommendations are in fact the kinds of things that cognitive behavioral psychologists do recommend as helpful for reducing anxiety uh, and stress for you know taking a more assertive um, uh, role in your life about you know getting raises and advancing your career and improving your relationships and friendships and family relationships and so on. And, uh, you know, most of that stuff is promoted by self-help gurus, you know, like Tony Robbins, these sorts of, you know, people that are in the trenches doing this. Most of what Jordan recommends is, you know, pretty much middle of the bell curve kind of stuff that, that most people think works pretty well for most people. Okay. So there's nothing wrong with that. Then the accusation, that you know he's a racist or a bigot or a misogynist you know i just don't see it i always ask people can you give me some examples and usually they have none or the few examples they have are so badly taken out of context it's like i don't think that's what he means when he says that and you know maybe sometimes he says things that are provocative in a in a way to stimulate conversation that's actually okay that's good you know a lot of a lot of philosophical thought experiments are designed to push your um, your kind of boundaries or push your thinking to see how far and how well grounded your beliefs are. So when someone like Peter Singer, uh, you know, asks people to think about, you know, whether, uh, you know, we should keep alive disabled people or babies that are so severely disabled that they'll never be able to even function. You know, people are horrified by this. You know, oh, you know, P Professor Singer thinks we should kill all handicapped people. No, this is not what he's doing. He he's, he's, he's kind of pushing you to think how well grounded are your moral principles? You'd say they're Christian principles or whatever. Uh, you know, how, how, how well have you thought that out? Are you a utilitarian? Are you a Kantian deontological? moralist what 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 are most people have never even thought about these things but you know it's sort of the point of, of a philosopher is to get you to at least think about these things regardless of what position you end up taking and so uh, i think jordan does some of that 
um, you know, like the, the famous one where it was something about should women wear makeup at work, you know, and, you know, that's just a mind trap. I would not even answer the question, but, you know, to his credit, he, you know, he had the spine to say, well, maybe we should think about that. Whoa. Now, of course, he's immediately called a massage. All he said was, maybe we should think about that or talk about that or whatever the exact words were. You know, he wasn't, you know, taking a position like women should never wear makeup at work because it sexualizes them and it gets men all heated up or, you know, whatever. You know, from there, you know, it's like, well, are you saying they should wear the burqa? You know, and it's just, again, I think a lot of that with Jordan is, is just like Peter Singer. Let, let, let's just think about these things and see how far we, we can go with that. Yeah, and I think there's a real value in that. And, you know, I wouldn't say I, I know Jordan super well. I wouldn't call him a close friend or anything like that. But I know him well enough to know. I, I think he's uh, a man of character and honesty and integrity. And, and he believes what he says. And he really wants to make a difference. And he does make a difference in people's lives. And, you know, that he's had personal problems. So what? I mean, everybody has personal problems that kind of humanizes him. And, uh, you know, it's just the way it goes. Hopefully we'll see him on the skeptic platform in the uh, the coming months. I'll keep my fingers crossed. Oh, for sure. Crossed. I I will, I will read his his new book. Oh, what bothered back to the employees? Yeah, what bothered me about that, mm. and I I admit I, I kind of jumped in on the pylon. Uh, <laughs> I tweeted something like translated uh, books that I agree with. That is to say, they were they were praising Penguin Random House for publishing, you know, books in support of LGBTQ people and so forth. Uh, but now it all appears to be performative, this word performative, where they get these words is too, it's too funny. Performative. In other words, Penguin Random House was just performing the act of supporting LGBTQ, but they don't really believe it because look, they just uh, agreed to publish Jordan Peterson. You mean to say, well, first of all, you know, Penguin Random House is a for-profit corporation, a major one, and they have to make money. That's their number one task. So there's nothing wrong with publishing, you know, people on both sides of an issue and making money on, in both cases. That's that's totally normal uh, in the business world. They're not a nonprofit. If you want to work for a nonprofit, go work for a nonprofit. But it's not going to be Penguin Random House, okay? And second of all, the, but by saying what they did, they're kind of saying, well, they should publish books that I agree with, you know. And these are usually like English majors just out of college, okay? What do you know? I mean, really, you know, you've you've determined what the truth is on these eternal moral issues at the age of 23, you know, and there's no more debate. You know, the standards that were set last Tuesday, that's it. That's the truth. Are you sure? You know, and they're the ones, if anything, that need to read Jordan Peterson. 